Good morning. It's a wonderful day, and it's wonderful to have all of you, and it's wonderful to be here. And for our visitors, special shout out to you as well, as always. Before we get into uh, <clears throat> what I'll attempt to do this morning, uh, let me take a moment to uh, offer uh, congratulations to John and uh, Lisa Carter. Uh, John and Lisa over here were uh, married last night at a little wedding venue uh, out in Alexander. Uh, nice little place. And they had a, uh, a small family gathering. Uh, by comparisons, it was very simple. A small wedding. Uh, <clears throat> John has been with us for Quite a while now. Lisa, of course, you've known for ages, and they have been friends for a long, long time, and now are together as husband and wife. It's very interesting. Their story is very interesting. And <clears throat> our love to them, our congratulations to both, and God bless them. They'll be a happy family, and so glad to have them part of Mabel Vale. Absolutely. So just want you to know that uh, they were married last night. I conducted the uh, ceremony, and in spite of that, it went off all right. Yeah. <laughs> Everything smooth as silk. Okay. We will be in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 this morning. All you need is an open Bible, and just kind of glance down, if you will, as we go through Sermon on the Mount just a little bit. And it's a monumental task to try to preach the Sermon on the Mount in less than half an hour, but we'll do the best we can. There's a TV show that is popular. It's called The Chosen. I have never watched it. It's one of those I have not chosen to get into. Some of you have, maybe many of you have. I have no doubt that it's a good one. I'm told of an episode when Jesus selected Matthew to, to be among the twelve. And the other eleven were somewhat taken aback by the selection of Matthew because Matthew was a tax collector. And in discussing it amongst themselves, the uh, other disciples said, well, that's different and Jesus said to them, get used to different. All right, get used to different. If you are a child of God, I hope by now that you are used to different because you are. And you better act like it. And you need to feel that you are and not be ashamed of it. Anyone who has a conception, the smallest conception of what the church is going through these days understands that we are in a nightmarish world today. I don't know if it's all that different than it's ever been. It may be. But because you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, you are different and you stand out. The world will never understand the church. That's just the way it is. We might like to change that, but we'll never be able to change that. Jesus said on one occasion in John 15 verse 19, if you were saying to his disciples, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Very clear and very concise statement. The church defines different. It always has. It needs to keep that up. 
without any change whatsoever. Because we play by different rules. Because we live by different standards. It's always been that way. We will never be able to consider ourselves strong in the way that the world counts strength. In terms of the way the world counts strength, we don't have it. We just don't have it. We are a handful among billions of people that oppose what you believe and what you do. It's been that way since the days of fleshly Israel. It's still the same in the days of spiritual Israel. Nothing has changed. And try as you may, we can never count noses to try to provide a show of strength. You cannot count noses. You cannot 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 count heads and say we are a strong body of people because in terms of the world we're not whatever the world does we don't do wherever the world goes we don't go when the world listens to the voice of the people we listen to the voice of God. When the world worships at 10,000 shrines, we worship one, God. When the world cries out for blood, we cry out for peace in Christ. When the world screams, hate and bigotry we love our neighbor and we love our enemies why because that's the way the master of the universe taught us and that's the way we've learned different you say different Jesus said in the show Chosen, get used to different. Not a bad idea. With such concepts as I've just mentioned to you, we will always be a minority. Always. Just a handful among the millions. Billions. The church of our Lord will always be a thorn in the side of the world. I wish that I could say otherwise, but I can't. And why is that? Because we live by different standards. We appeal to different laws. We live in different ways. We believe different things. We're different. Is there a depth to that different? Yes. Is the depth to different defined by the different denominations that exist? You say they're all different. Well, they are. But that doesn't define the depth of different. Doesn't come close to it. In fact, every single one of them need to change to come back to the different. Nothing defines different better than the Sermon on the Mount. So for that reason, I want us to pick it up this morning and just give a glance through it to get an idea of what Jesus might mean by different. Get used to different. And there's a depth to it. The Sermon on the Mount gives us some ideas to how different we really are. In the opening chapter, in chapter 5, Matthew, 
The sermon begins with different values that you have. And he lays these out in the Beatitudes in verses 1 through 12. Blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. Long list Beatitudes. And you reach down, you read down through each of them. And if you will look at these Beatitudes, every single one of them represents a complete inversion of what the world considers to be important. And what I mean by that is every beatitude that Jesus named expresses a different idea of the values that you have as a child of God or should have. Because nobody in the world ever considered greatness among those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Nobody in the world sees greatness in any of that or in all of it together. But the value is different, you see. In each case, it defines a different person, a different standard, different mentality. Let other people be the way they are. Let the world go its way. Let others have their fleshly pursuits. The Christian doesn't. Let others have their locked minds. Let others have their sectarian spirit. Jesus defines different here in terms of values. That's the place to start. Because nobody will ever enter the kingdom that Jesus set up on this earth that we call the church, the the Holy Spirit called the church. But nobody will ever enter that who does not adapt the values that are mentioned here. That's where you start. Different values. And then, secondly, in the same chapter, Jesus lays out what I will call, and I guess for lack of a better word, different interpretations. And that's in Matthew 5, verses 21 through the end of the chapter. And this is the length of Scripture where Jesus said repeatedly, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, those of old time, thus and so, but I say unto you, and you follow that all the way through. In each case, Jesus gives something that was well known. Quotes a scripture. Cites a truth. In every instance. But I say to you. So he gives the popular interpretation of it. This is the way people applied it. They applied it in terms of law. Sometimes legalistically, in times of outward, in terms of outward form, but Jesus cut to the heart. In each case, he defined human relationships in terms of the heart, and he got down to the core of the principle in every single instance. Telling his disciples and consequently telling us that truth has got to get into you. And it better get into your heart. And it better, it'll, it'll make you and remake you from the inside out. 
So where problems exist in terms of outward expression of lust, Jesus says, you better take care of it in the heart. Just as an example of the many that are given here. People may know that you're a Christian by the things that you do. The places you go or choose not to go. And by a dozen other different factors, they may know something about you. But if they don't know your heart, they don't know the real you. Christianity is doctrine, yes, purity of doctrine, but it's much more than that. If a life of integrity does not follow purity of doctrine, then we are of all people most pharisaic. Different interpretations. Read the rest of Matthew 5. And look at how Jesus defines different. And he says, get used to that. In Matthew 6, really, the entire chapter, especially the first part of it, Jesus defines different motivations in terms of the things that people do And the early verses of chapter 5, or chapter 6 rather, have to do with religious actions. Notably, charitable giving, prayer, and fasting. Those three things through about the first half of the chapter. And Jesus pinpoints each one of them. And he defines an outward show that people love to demonstrate in each case. They love for others to know that they give. They love for others to see that they pray. They love for others to be wooed and wowed at the fact that they fast. And Jesus said in terms of different, you don't need any of it. When you give, don't let anybody know what you're doing. When you pray, step into your closet, close the door. Pray to your Father in secret, and He'll reward you openly. When you fast, don't make a big deal out of it. So the difference here is that we in the church then are not interested in Show and demonstration, but in pleasing God. That's the different. And Jesus says, get used to that. That's the way it is. Sometimes people are very generous of heart. And they love to give and they love to help. That's all good. And then they'll post it all over Facebook and say, look what I've done. That's the world standard. That's not Jesus' standard. Sometimes people will ask me, is it all right for me to do that? And I'll say, sure. Just don't make a big deal out of it. Different standards. Different motivation. All together. Hard thing for us to get used to. But it can be done. And once we do, and as we learn to grow and please God, then life itself will change altogether. As you go through Matthew 6, you pick up indications of it. When we learn to live by God's different, we'll quit worrying about everything. And all of our worries that drag us down and, and get a grip on us and choke hold, really. All of that is gone. I mean, pick up at Matthew 6, verse 25, go down through the end of the chapter. You've got a lengthy sermon on it. Get used to different. And you won't spend your life worried about everything under the sun. It'll make a different person out of you. Different. There's a lot of depth to that. And then the next thing, 
In Matthew 7, different choices. We all make choices. Good, bad, ugly. And when we make those choices, we'll learn something from it. We'll learn a different way of looking at people. And we'll do away with the judgment, judgmental standard that the world seems to love. And we'll quit judging people censoriously. I understand the obligation that we have to judge the fruit tree, I know. At the same time, I know censorious, bitter, hypocritical judgment is devastating to people. And when people learn different, they don't do it. And we have to practice that with ourselves just as well as we do anybody else. And when we learn different, we'll appreciate the different choices that really boil down to two ways. There's a broad way and there's a narrow way. And that's it. And Jesus defined it that way. The broad way, that's where the world goes. So many go in there at. The narrow way, difficult, hemmed in, very strict. Few there be that find it, Jesus said. Why? Because it defines different. That's the way it is. And when it comes right down to it, Jesus said, you know, in terms of all this different that the sermon defines, that he defined in the sermon, he said, a lot of people won't understand that. They won't appreciate it. They won't grasp it. They won't like it. They'll oppose it. But you know, interestingly enough, the people that heard this sermon, wouldn't you, can you imagine what it would have been like to have been there when Jesus sat down with his disciples and the multitudes and preached this sermon and you heard it and you shared the conclusion that these people did in Matthew 7, verses 28 and 29, right at the very end where Matthew gives you the impressions that these people had by what Jesus said. That they were astonished, he said. At what? At his authority. Because he taught them, not as the scribes, but he taught them with authority. God's authority. That makes an impression on people. Always has. It's no different now. People are still people. Sermon on the Mount defines different. The world doesn't like it. You better embrace it. See the difference. Begin with the Sermon on the Mount. Start by a heart change in terms of the Beatitudes. And let that move you. Through the Spirit-given Word to change you from the inside out. Bring you to the Savior who Himself was different. He was a different kind of teacher. A different preacher. A different healer. Everything about Him was different. He did not fit the public conception of what a Messiah should be. He was different. And now I think I have some idea of what Jesus defines as the depth of difference. Not human difference, God's different. And it's always astounding to think about it. And New Testament Christianity will always be different. You can mark it down. But embrace it this morning. Obey the Lord. Repent of your sins. Come back to the Savior, your first love, if you will, while we stand, while we sing to encourage you.